Hi, everyone, and welcome to the third lesson of Unit 4. And this one's titled, uh, Factored Form of a Quadratic Relation. And the goal today is to explore this new form. And, uh, and you know, I've already introduced the idea. It's called a factored form. So clearly, quadratics can come in different forms. And so uh, we want to explore this other form of it. And just maybe to relate this back to linear, um, you know, we've we've been exposed to the fact that last year in grade nine, um, you learned uh, that uh, in terms of linear equations, uh, so lines, so linear equations or linear relations, you know that there was one where it was y equals mx plus b. So I could give you a line that looks like this. y is equal to 2x minus 3. So that's what we call the slope, the slope y-intercept form. That was the slope y-intercept form of a line because we know that it gave us, it quickly gave us the slope of the line, which was the m, and it gave us the y-intercept, which was the b. So we always really liked that form of a line. And so for this one, we would say, oh, the slope of that line is 2, and the y-intercept is 0, negative 3. So uh, you know, that was something that we learned, but there were other forms, and I, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was the standard form of a linear, of a linear equation, and it looks something like this, um, ax plus by plus c equals zero, so it might be something like this, um, uh, you know, 2x uh, plus 6y minus 7 equals 0. Now, that was another form of a line. It wasn't as nice a form because it didn't give us a ton of information right off the bat, but it was another form that you would be given. And one of the first things you would often do with the standard form of a line is you'd convert it back into the y equals mx plus b form. And so for this one, you may say, okay, well, 6y is equal to, you'd move the 2x over, you'd go negative 2x plus 7. So I, I, I subtracted 2x from both sides, I added 7 to both sides, and then you could divide the 6 off, divide the 6, and so you'd say y is equal to, and negative 2 over 6 is negative 1 third x plus 7 over 6. And you know, so that's, you know, these two are the same line. These two are both the same line. It's, they're just different forms of a line. Okay, so having said all that, we can have different forms of quadratic relations. And, and the one we've seen so far is, uh, you know, the standard form. We've seen y uh, is equal to um, ax squared plus bx plus c, we've seen that form, which is, you know, this, the standard form, um, uh, the standard form, but now we're going to explore the factored form. Okay, so here we go. First question I would say, and, and I'm going to tell you right off the bat, that this, this one is in factored form, but the question is, is that, is this graph a parabola? You know, in other words, I, you know, you may look and say, well, wait a second, you, you just finished telling me in the last lesson that it needed this, that the x needed this squared on it. And I don't see a squared anywhere here. But, but the problem is, is that it could be hidden. It could be hidden. So the question we're asking ourselves, is this, when you graph it, does it look like either this or this? Is it a u facing up or a u facing down? Okay, and then the second question, if so, in which direction does it open? And you need to justify your answer. Okay, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna play with this a little bit. And so what, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a table of values. And uh, they've done the first point for you. They've uh, substituted negative 3 in there. And I'll just show you um, for negative 3 you get, uh, so if you were to put negative 3 in here and negative 3 in here, 
the first bracket, uh, you would have two times and the negative three plus one is negative two. And then negative three minus another five is negative eight. And so technically you'd have two times negative two, which is negative four. And then you'd have negative four times negative eight, a negative times a negative is a positive, you get 32. Okay, so they've done the first one for us, but now they want us to do a few more. And the whole idea is that we're gonna try to see what the table of values looks like. Okay, well, let's throw negative two in there. All right, let's, I'm just gonna do another one right here. I'll just say y is equal to two times, and let's throw negative two in there, negative two plus one, and then negative two minus five. Um, in fact, let me just, uh, let me just write down in case someone is looking at this. I'm going to just, I'm gonna, just going to write here, uh, sub, uh, x equal to negative two in the equation, just to kind of let people know what I'm doing here. And so when we do that, we'd have two times, well, negative two plus one is negative one negative two minus another five is negative seven. And so you'd have two times negative one, which is negative two and negative two times negative seven is plus 14. Okay, so let's come over here and we'll write 14 there. Let's do this again. Let's uh, sub x equal to negative one in the equation. We're going to keep building our table of values here. We're summing it into this factored form. So here we go. Negative 1 plus 1, negative 1 minus 5. Okay, 2 times. Well, negative 1 plus 1, oh, that's 0. And then negative 1 minus another 5 is negative 6. But it doesn't really matter because you're going to be multiplying 2 times 0, which is 0, anything times 0 is 0, and then 0 times negative 6, so this one is 0. Okay. Um, and let's, um, I, basically, we can do the other ones. I, I, if you throw, I don't want to kind of keep writing them out. It's going to take a lot of room here, but I'll just, I'll tell you that when you plug 0 in, and you can, you can try this on your own if you like, you get a negative 10. And when you plug uh, 1 in, you get negative 16. And when you get 2 in, you get negative 18. Okay, so that's, that's the, the results of, uh, I'll just put a little star here, is uh, determine the remaining, the remaining y values. Okay, so we just did that by subs, um, oops, by substituting in. Determine the remaining y values by sub uh, substituting. Oh boy, sub st. Sorry, you guys. Substituting into equation. Okay, so that's what I've done there is just finish this off. Okay, well now let's look at the first differences and second differences. And the reason why we're going to look at those is that those are a good indication. We know that if they have constant first differences, it's linear. And we know that if it's constant second differences, it's a quadratic. So we have that tool that we can use. And some of you might even be thinking, like, Mr. Webster, you told me last year that if, the, if none of the um, variables had an exponent, that it was, it was linear. You may be saying, hey, that looks linear to me. Um, so here we go. And so my, my challenge to you on that, well, is that it, will all the variables have um, uh, an exponent of one if you were to expand this. And that's going to be the question that we're going to look at. Okay, so here we go. First difference is, what did I have to do to go from 32 to 14? You know, or another way of saying first difference is, is what's 14 minus 32? Well, it's minus 18. 
okay, what did I do to go from 14 to zero, or what's zero minus 14? That's negative 14. And then negative 10 minus zero is negative 10. Negative 16 minus a negative 10 or plus 10 is negative six. And then finally negative two. So that's the first difference. That's the difference between these two. That's the difference between these two, the difference between these two, and so on. So clearly we're seeing that the first differences aren't constant. This is not linear. Well, let's do the second differences. And so here we go. I'll just get a different color. And sure enough, uh, to go from negative 18 to negative 14, I would have to add 4. Listen to that. You know, I'm going to a smaller negative number. Again, you could do negative 14 minus a negative 18. Well, minus a negative would mean plus 18. Okay, to go from negative 14 to negative 10, it's 4. From negative 10 to negative 6, it's plus 4. And from negative 6 to negative 2, it's plus 4. Those are all plus. Okay, so what we're seeing here is constant second differences. And so here I'll just draw my conclusion is uh, since uh, the second differences, since the second differences, um, are the same, are the same, since the second differences are the same, um, it is a parabola. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So right now we've come to that conclusion. So yes, we've answered the first question, definitely it's a parabola. But then which direction does it open? Now listen to this, this is another kind of conclusion that you're allowed to draw. Um, we know it opens, it opens up uh, because the second differences are positive. Because the second differences are positive. are positive. Okay, so there's another neat thing that you can do by doing the second differences. If, th if those second differences were negative, we would know that it opens, it opens down. So right now we know that this is a, you know, this graph is going to look like this. Now that's all we can, we can judge at this point. Okay, uh, here we go. Example number two. It says, determine the y-intercept, the zeros, and the axis of symmetry and vertex of a quadratic relation that looks like this. y is equal to uh, 2 times x minus 4 times x plus 2. So right away, I'm hoping that you guys now see, okay, well, we've been given a quadratic that is in factored form. So this is the new form we're learning about today. It's factored form. And um, we're going to try to get some of these important characteristics of it. We're going to try to get, because we, you know, we've seen these last lesson. We've seen that these are important characteristics um, of a quadratic, of a parabola. And so let's see how we can pull these out of it. In the same way that when you look at a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, you can quickly pull out the slope and the y-intercept. Let's see if there's some things we can quickly pull out of a factored form. Okay, well, let's start with, we'll start with the first thing. Let's start with the y-intercept. Well, last year we learned that if you want the y-intercept of, uh, of a linear relation, uh, of, of a line, you would have to set x equal to zero. All right, so let's do the same thing here. And it, it, so I'll just say here, set x equal to zero. So here we go. y is equal to two times zero minus four, and then zero plus two. Okay, let's solve that. Two times 
Well, 0 minus 4 is negative 4. 0 plus 2 is plus 2. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 times 2, and then 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. All right. Um, well, I'm going to graph that. I'm, you know, I've, 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 I've got the y-intercept, and so I'm going to graph it. And just so that I can fit this on my graph, I'm going to make every uh, box in the y-axis, I'm going to make it 2. So I'll just show you that that means that this is, this is negative 2, and then that's negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, uh, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14, negative 16. I'll few, put a few more on here. Uh, negative 18, negative 20, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm going to graph my y-intercept. Here we go. I'm going to put a dot right there. So I know, I don't know much about this, this, uh, this parabola, but I know where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, well, let's move on to the next thing then. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is, are the, are the zeros. Well, the zeros, remember, it's another term for the x-intercept, or intercepts. So I'm going to put zeros. And then I'm going to put in brackets, it's the x-intercepts. Okay. So last year for lines, we did that by, uh, we set y equal to 0. So we did x and y intercepts with lines as well. Well, we can do the same thing here. Okay. So here we go. I am going to set y equal to 0. So here we, I'm, I'm going back to the original equation. I'm going to go 0 is equal to 2 times x minus 4, x plus 2. Okay, now this is a little bit easier than you think, especially when the quadratics is in factored form, because I'm going to ask you something here, is that if you want, right, right now we know that this side equals 0. Well, I'm going to ask you guys, what could you do to make the right-hand side equal zero? So here's the question is, um, how can uh, this side, oops, <laughs> this side equal zero? There's the question. Okay, so um, here we go. Um, how can that side equal zero? Well, do you agree with me that if, if this value were to be zero, or this value were to be zero, or this value were to be equal to zero, because they're all being multiplied together, if any, if any one of those was zero, then that whole side is zero. Let me repeat this, is that there, you technically have three terms there, the two, the bracket x minus 4 and the bracket x plus 2. If any of those are 0, then when you multiply them together, they all equal 0. Well, the 2 can never be 0. It's 2. You can't change that. So that you don't have to worry about the first one. But let's worry, let's think about that second term. What would x have to be um, in order for that second term to be 0? Well, I'm going to just set it equal to zero and say, well, what would x have to be? And I think a lot of you would look at this and say, well, that's easy, Mr. Webster. x would have to be 4. If x was 4 in that case, that term would be zero. Okay, well, what about the second bracket? If, if it's x plus 2, what would x have to be for that second bracket to be zero? And I think a lot of you would look at me and say, well, that's easy. It's, it would have to be negative 2. Now, one thing I'll say to you guys is you can, you know, one way of thinking about this, and I'll just show you on the second one, is that if you subtract 2 from this side, you'd also, in math, you'd have to subtract 2 from this side. And sure enough, 
you've isolated x and it's x equals negative two. But I think a lot of you, without doing that little additional math, would say to yourself, well, I can see that if I put a negative two in there, it turns that to zero. So you guys, there you go. Notice that having the, the quadratic and factored form makes finding the zeros really easy. There they are, x equal to negative two and x equal to four. So the zeros, let me just go back to blue here. I would say, therefore, the zeros or the x-intercepts, the zeros are, and look at this, I'm going to turn them into a point now. Look at this, this the points are 4, 0, and negative 2, 0. Um, because, you know, when x equals 4, y equals 0. That's what we've been doing in this. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to plot those two points. So I said uh, 4, 0, and on the, the y, or sorry, on the x, I'm going to use them as, 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 uh, as 1 each. So look at this. That's going to be plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. I can have different scales on my x and y axis as long as I'm consistent. So that's negative 1, that's negative 2, that's negative 3, and that's negative 4. So, oh, <laughs> negative, let me fix that up, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. There we go. Okay, so look at this. I know that I've got a dot right there. That's where it crosses the x-axis. And I got a dot right there at negative two. So I've got I've got three points on here for this uh, for this quadratic or this parabola, and it's starting to make sense to me. I kind of in my mind picture that it's going to come down here, but I don't know where the bottom of it is. Like I don't know whether the bottom is is here or here or here or here. So let's let's try and and do a couple more things. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we have now done the zeros. All right, let's do the axis of symmetry. Okay, so for the axis of symmetry, um, we learned uh, in a previous lesson that it's halfway between the zeros. So listen to this, the axis of symmetry is halfway uh, between the zeros. Because the axis, remember, it's, the parabola has to be the same on either side of the um, axis of symmetry, so it must be halfway between the zeros. So look at this. This is a nice way of doing the axis of symmetry, is that we know the zeros are 4 and negative 2, and if it if the axis of, axis of symmetry is halfway through that, I'm going to divide those by 2. So 4 plus negative 2 is 2 over 2. The axis of symmetry is 1. So it's x equal to 1. And it's this vertical line at x equal to 1. So here it is. There's x equal to 1. There's x equal to 1. So this is the vertical line. It's just going to go right down there. So here I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a line, and I'm going to put it in with a dotted line. And here it is. It goes right down there. So my parabola is, is going to be cut in half by that axis of symmetry. OK. Um, here we go. Let's go back. We have now done the axis of symmetry. And finally, the vertex, because we know that that's a really important part of these parabolas. So our final thing for this one is to do the vertex. Oops, I wanted to get a different color. There we go, the vertex. And so first of all, um, we know that the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. So the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, goes through the vertex, perfect. Okay, so we know that the vertex is gonna be x 
y, it's going to be this point. But if the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, we know the x value. We know that it's got to be 1 something. Okay, well, let's sub x equal to 1 into our equation, into y um, is equal to 2 times x minus 4, x plus 2. All right, perfect. So 2 times 1 minus 4, 1 plus 2. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3 times 3. Um, so 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. There we go. We know that the vertex is 1 negative 18. So here we go. I'll go put this last one on there. And sure enough, it's right there. All right, so we have got everything we need to draw this. And I'm going to give it a shot. You guys know that it's not very easy to freehand this, so I need you to be forgiving of me here. So here we go. It's going to come down and go back up. So there we get it started, and then it's going to go. It's going to go up like that. Well done, Mr. Webster. And then up here. Ooh, not bad. There we go. So there's the parabola. And we have done everything. Perfect. Okay. Uh, one more example. So this one says, determine the equation for the following parabola. Well, here we go. Um, so it says, determine the equation for this. Well, we know that there's, uh, we know two forms right now. We know that there's a, a, a general form, gen, we know there's a general form, and we know that there's a factored form of a parabola. And so it doesn't tell me which, which form to write it in. So it's really up to me to pick the form. And I can tell you that this is um, ax squared plus bx plus c. And this one we now know is y is equal to, and I'm going to, it's going to be some value a times x minus r, x minus s. That's kind of what it's going to look like. Okay, well, listen to this. I want to just explore this in a little bit. Um, I, I, you know, I can write it in either form. It didn't tell me which one to write it in. But let's explore this one in a little bit more detail. What, what do I mean by these R's and S's? Well, listen to this. We just we, we've, we've kind of learned in this lesson that where R and S are the x-intercepts. Okay, well, that might be an easy thing to get from a graph. So let's look at this graph and look at here. I can see down here that I've got an x-intercept at negative 2 and 1. So I know that r is equal to negative 2 and s is equal to 1. Now, one thing I want to quickly emphasize here is that the negatives in our general form of this factored form are, are negatives. So watch this. As I plug those in, look what happens to them. I'll just say here, so now I know, so I know this. Y is equal to, I don't know what A is yet, but I know that R is negative 2. So watch this, X minus, and then it's negative 2. You get a double negative, and I'm going to show you what happens. And then I'll go x minus 1. All I've done is I took my s and plugged it in there, and I took my negative 2 and I plugged it in there. Okay, I'm going to get rid of those arrows just so that they don't cloud things up. Okay, so there, that's what I've plugged in. So let me just fix this up a little bit. And so I know that y is equal to a 
and then x, I've got a double negative, so it's technically x plus 2, and then x minus 1. And remember what we did on the previous slide, is that whenever you're finding the zeros, you're finding the x values that are going to make the bracket 0. And sure enough, x equal to negative 2 would make that bracket 0. So that's why it's one of my x-intercepts. And x equal to 1 would make that bracket 0. That's why it's one of our x-intercepts. So just be aware of that. Okay, so here we go. Let's, let's now, I'm almost there. I'm, I've almost got my equation. I just need that a value. Well, I don't know if you remember this from grade 9, but whenever we, we got the um, y equals mx plus b, when we got the m, like y equals 2x plus b, how did we get the b? Well, we subbed a point in. So look at this. I'm going to look over at my graph here. I can't pick one of my x about x-intercepts, but I also know that this point up here is on the graph. So look at this. I'm going to say sub the point, uh, sub in point, and then it's 0, 10 to get A, to get point A. All right, cool, cool. So here we go. There's my x. There's my y, so I'm going to sub in 10 for y is equal to a times 0 plus 2, 0 minus 1. Okay, so 10 is equal to a times 0 plus 2 is 2, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Okay, so 10 is equal to, well, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and then negative 2 times a is negative 2a. And then to get a, we've got to divide this side by negative 2. Whatever we do to one side of math, we've got to do to the other. That, that turns negative 2 over negative 2 turns into 1, which is just 1a or a, and 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. So our final, our final answer, the final answer is y is equal to negative 5 times um, x plus 2 x minus 1. There you go. Ooh, that doesn't really look like a 5. Let me fix that up. x minus 5 or sorry, uh, y is equal to negative 5, x plus 2, x minus 1. And there you go. We've written an equation. Now, it's in factored form, but it didn't tell me that it, it had to be in, um, in uh, the standard form, so I'm done. Okay. Um, just a, a, This is like a, a little summary of what we've done in the lesson so far. It's a nice little summary for you of, uh, you know, basically when parabolas are opening up, that you know that x or that the a value is greater than zero when they open down the a value is less than zero um, this is the general form of the of what we call the factored form or the general expression for the factored form and the x-intercepts are r and s um, and so this is interesting you can also get the y intercept by doing once you have it in in factored form you can do a times r times s that's another little trick that you've got up your sleeve to find the y intercepts okay and then i showed you this one already which is the x coordinate of the vertex can be found by just doing r plus s divided by two so that's another, uh, so we've got some, some little things that we've got up our sleeve as we attack these. I've got your homework questions on here. You can see they're here. Uh, and I've got the answers to those homework questions on your very last page of this slide. Give those a try and let me know if you have any questions. Take care, you guys.